Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. Uh, with the release the, this past week of our new QTS Hero uh, 4.5.2, um, among quite a few other fixes and improvements that have been made in that firmware, one of the biggest changes is that we have now added uh, the Snap Sync feature into QUTS Hero. So it's been talked about on the, the Hero page for quite a while. Um, finally, we've got that uh, into the release firmware now. So if you do an update to this firmware, you will see a new option. Uh, within your storage and snapshot section. So down here under the snapshot backup, you'll see SnapSync. So with QTS, our other operating system, we've always had things like Snapshot Replica and Snapshot Vault, uh, which are fantastic ways to back up uh, your NAS. It not only does snapshots on your main NAS, but you can also replicate those um, to another device so that you can um, truly have it as a backup. So your data is in two places. Um, SnapSync is an improvement on Snapshot Replica. So the main benefits of Snapshot Replica, um, uh, sorry, of SnapSync over Snapshot Replica, is that it's a block-level replication utility um, that really only just needs a full backup and the last differential backup to do a restore. So if you want to rebuild a, a volume, a share, a, a iSCSI LUN perhaps, um, you want to do anything like that, instead of restoring the original full backup and then lots of incremental or differential backups, to get to the point where you needed. All you need is that full backup and the very last differential backup, and then it will be able to rebuild itself back to a fully working uh, volume if that's what you want to do with it. Um, so here on this NAS, I've got a TVS H1288X uh, as my source of the data. So here I've got a couple of volumes. Um, the public uh, one is the one with the 67 snapshots there. That's the one that I'm going to be using um, to do a snap sync to the other NAS. Um, I don't currently have a snap sync set up for the movies folder there with the 32 or so snapshots. Um, that's one I'll, I'll show you how to do a, a snap sync setup with that one in a moment. So once you've got a snap sync set up, you come down into the snap sync section and when you've already got a job created, it's going to show up here. So this is where you can get the status of the snap sync. Um, I do have a TVS-882T, which is running QUTS Hero as well. And over here, we see the exact same information display. The source is the TVS-H1288X, and it's going to the TVS-882T. So what you'll see when the backup's set up is if you go to the storage and snapshots on the destination device, you'll notice that you've uh, got an extra um, volume created, but it will be in read-only. So you're going to get that little exclamation mark just letting you know that it's read-only. So this is the snap sync target um, of the other NAS that's backing up into it. So everything is completely mirrored from the other NAS to this NAS. So here we see that we've got 67 snapshots. If I go back over to the other one and go to the storage and snapshot section, I've got a real-time snap, uh, snap sync set up here. So if I was to take a snapshot um, immediately now, an on-demand one, and take it up to the 68 snapshots, um, on the local NAS that we're looking at here, because I've got a real-time snap sync going between this NAS and the other NAS, if I go across here, we can see that it's already gone to 68. So every time a snapshot is taken off the primary NAS, it will replicate that over with snap sync to the other NAS absolutely instantly, as quick as the, uh, the connection will allow. You do get a little information on what the connection speed is. So we can see that the TVS H1288X here is on 2.5 gig, um, whereas the TVS 882T is connected at 10 gig. So obviously the H1288X here is the limiting uh, factor. Uh, I'm using the 10 gig connections or something else. So um, to, to link between these two NAS, I've used that. Uh, the NAS don't have to be directly connected. You can go through a switch infrastructure if you wish, which is what I'm doing. Um, but that's how I've got these two set up with the uh, uh, the snap sync from one to the other. Um, very limited options once it's created. It's very easy to set up. So in the settings for the snap sync service, you can change the port. If you don't want port 874 uh, to be used, you can use it for something else. And you can also limit the speed if you need to as well. Um, when you've got the job created, you can stop the job over here. So if you don't want it to happen any further, you can stop it. And you've also got edit functions so that you can change things like uh, compression or DGB if you want to enable those on the uh, snap sync job as well. And you can also delete it. Uh, now, where the volume shows up as read only, if for ever whatever reason the main NAS had a problem, went offline, and you want to be able to immediately use this, there's no restore needed. You can simply just 
stop the snap sync. That will change this read only back to a ready uh, state so that you can read and write to it. Um, you may have to go into the shared folder settings to adjust the permissions. So if you've got sharing permissions on your primary NAS, where only certain users or groups can access that share, you may have to go and set those permissions up again um, if you've got some custom settings. Um, but it's it's all set up and ready to go there. If you want to keep the snap sync active, another option you can do is just clone um, the snapshot off this one. So if you will look over here, this being the destination one, the TVS 882T, if we go into the snapshot manager, we've got a clone option down here. So you can pick whichever backup that you want, whichever snapshot, um, and you can click clone. So I've already done that, and I've got a clone of that um, uh, volume over here as well. So this one over here is an exact mirror of what was happening on this one up to about 20 minutes ago when I cloned it. So once it's cloned, you've got full read and write access to it. You can use this as your primary. Um, if you get the other NAS fixed, you can get rid of this one down here if you want to. And then you can use this one to restore back to the other NAS if you want to as well. Um, so we've had SnapSync for a while now on our QES operating system, which is available on our really top end enterprise units, the high availability dual controller units. Um, you are able to use a QUTS Hero uh, NAS as a backup destination for SnapSync from a QES based NAS as well. So it doesn't just have to be QUTS Hero, it could also be one of our QES based NAS as well. So they are interchangeable with the SnapSync feature, it will work between them. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll show you how to set up a SnapSync job. It's, um, it's pretty quick and easy. So here I'll go down to SnapSync and I'll say create a SnapSync job. You get two choices. So sync from this NAS to another one or go the other way. This is good for a re uh, if you wanted to do a restore, for example. So we'll say sync to a remote NAS. Get to choose the job name. Now it's by default picked the first share that was created. So we're going to change that to a different one that's actually got some snapshots on it. So that would be the movies folder. Um, so I'm going to say the movies and it will rename the job depending on the share that you've done. You can override that if you want to as well. Um, so now we're going to click next. Now it wants the destination NAS information. So I'm just going to type in the password for that one and click connect. Um, it's going to go off and connect. Um, now at the bottom of the page there you will see some other options there for uh, the backup frequency. This is where you'd set it to be um, on a schedule whether you want to do it only on a manual basis. Um, or you can choose the middle option there which is for real time as well. Uh, so we'll just wait for that to fully connect up to the uh, TVS-882T. There we go. So we're all connected. We can change the settings to whatever we want. I'll set it to real time. Um, you can choose which pool it goes to on that NAS. So now we've authenticated with the other NAS. We now got the uh, action to see both pools. So I'll send it to storage pool 2, which has a bit more free space. And you can say uh, what you want to create, um, the volume over there that this data is going to get stored in. So for this one, I'll say this is the... Um, uh, movies uh, folder, let's say. So we'll say movies folder. And um, here's where you can choose compression or deduplication. Again, you can change these settings a bit later on. We'll click next. I'm going to let it automatically select the adapter, but it will pick uh, for both NAS which network adapter it's going through. This is a useful option if you are using a, uh, a dedicated direct link between the two. We'll click next. Just a summary of all the settings, and then we'll click create. Uh, so now what it's doing is it's going off and creating the setup. It's first of all going to create the movies underscore folder volume over on the storage pool 2 of the TVS 882T. Uh, once it's confirmed that's done, it's then going to set off the sync from one NAS to the other NAS. So we can see here that that's now set up. And if I was to click over to the TVS 882T and go to the snap sync section, we see that that one's now also been created over here as well. So we can see that that's uh, trying to update now. So it's going across 197 megabytes a second. And we can see that we've now also got another read-only folder that's been created here, which is the movies underscore folder that I created on the TVS H1288X. Um, so that's now going to do its best to do the real-time uh, sync of the data initially. Now, obviously, the initial sync is going to take a while. It's got to transmit all the data from the other NAS to this NAS. Um, once that's done, it's really just the block level incremental changes um, between each snapshot that you take. So if we were to go back to the other NAS, we can see the different schedules we've got. So on this NAS with the uh, public folder, um, I've got a snapshot to happen every hour at the half past the hour mark. 
so that's the schedule I've got for the uh, snapshots on the primary NAS on the primary share there. Now, if I go across to the movies folder, I did that a little differently. Um, every five minutes, it's taking a snapshot. So that's that's how I've got it structured. I don't have smart snapshots enabled or anything like that. I've just got it set to every five minutes take a snapshot. Um, so no matter when a snapshot is taken over here, it's going to get um, synced over to the other NAS over here as well. So we can see here that the snapshots are starting to increase as the backup's copying over. So it's only done two so far. If we check back, it looks like there's 33 to do, but as there's a new snapshot every five minutes, we'll probably see that go up to 34 before it's finished. Um, so that's going to try and sync over all those snapshots right now uh, from one to the other. Um, so that's SnapSync. It's a brand new feature. It's completely free in the QUTS Hero operating system. Um, so anybody that was using uh, Snapshot Replica and Snapshot Vault previously, uh, you can switch over to using SnapSync if you want. Um, the biggest um, advantage is just how quick it is to do a restore. So if you ever did have a disaster with your primary NAS um, and you wanted to get your data back, it's a, a really fast way to do it, much quicker than using Snapshot Replica to do a restore for your data as well. Um, if anybody does have any questions on uh, SnapSync, um, please do let us know in the comments section below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, thanks a lot. For